is Ritanya. I'm 14 years old and I'm a 9th grader studying in SBOI school in junior college, Chennai. And I'm the author of Serendipity, A Happy Chance. So before we start with the story, let me ask you a simple question. Have you ever faced a life-changing experience in your life? A terrible experience? If yes, feel free to share about it. And even if you didn't, now let us start reading a story about a gruesome incident that changes the life of two people drastically. The whole universe is different from yesterday just from your happiness. The warm air was crisp as it hit her face, softer than the feather of a little pigeon, delicate than the petal of a morning rose. The sun shone brightly with all its might, and the pathway was filled with vivid blossoms. The day was busy as ever, with people bustling in and out of the glassy building. There was a content skip in her legs as she strode onto the airport that was filled with the constant chatter of excited people and the occasional zoom of a takeoff. She crossed the waiting points, made her way to one of the counters meant for the staff and registered herself by showing the identification card that was loosely hanging around her neck. The officer nodded in approval and led her inside the partly empty plane. As soon as she entered, she was greeted by a warm hug and from the frutal cologne of the person, she knew that it was Jenny Brown, her closest and only pal. Hello, Trista, she said, and her lips curled into a welcoming smile like always. Hello, Jenny, she replied, returning the latter's smile. Ready for work? As ready as I'll ever be. It was almost 10 minutes before the landing, but right then, an emergency has been announced. We have lost our location. The passengers are requested not to panic. And that static voice of the co-pilot cut through the silence like a knife in melted butter and gave her slight fear. There were hushed whispers all around and color drained from the faces of a few. That's when she analyzed the intensity of the situation and regained her composure by repeatedly muttering, have confidence, have confidence, to herself. In a moment, the life jackets were dropped from the emergency cabinet and she felt little hands tug her sleeve. The boy spoke. My, my mom? She hasn't returned from the washroom. M may I know where is it? She pointed her hand to the back side of the plane as the boy skimmed through his pockets and took something out. A keychain, to be exact. He handed it to her and whispered, If I don't make it out alive, please give this to Dad. She clutched it tightly in her right hand, and before she could reassure the boy, a loud crash was heard. And the last thing she knew, everything turned black. She woke up in a cold sweat, panting heavily as she whispered to herself, It's just a dream. It's just a dream. Though it had been almost a year after the dreadful incident, the memories continued to haunt her in the form of nightmares. After the accident, things changed. She had a fracture on her left hand that affected her jaw. Hundreds of passengers were reported dead, including the boy with a keychain. Most of all, she had lost her best friend, Jenny. The soul thought, mid tears flew out of her eyes with an intensity that the waterfalls would be jealous of. She still remembered when Jenny lay as one among the prostrate bodies with a pristine uniform coated by a dark shale of thick blood. Trista had fallen prey to depression after the incident. It took one whole year for her to come out of it. But still, the gruesome past was engraved in her memory. A few days had passed and the winter began. The effortless chill and the tender snowflakes were something that she adored in this season. She had just finished her shift and made her way out of the cabin. She couldn't wait to return home. But once she reached the arrivals area, her eyes automatically scanned over the people for a particular person. 
Her heart skipped a beat as she saw the man sitting on one of the metal chairs with his eyes squinted at nothing in particular. She was curious as this person who always sported a gear sweater came at every Friday to the arrival session but left having no one along with him. She brushed it off and made her way to a nearby park but not before making a visit to a cafe and buying herself a caramel macchiato. The drink was warm in her hands, giving a subtle contrast to the chilly wind filled with snowflakes. She closed her eyes as she took a petite sip through the straw, and the liquid soothed her as she swallowed it. She gently fluttered her eyes open, and her fingers found themselves rummaging her bag, taking a familiar keychain out. She looked at the ever so familiar writing engraved in it. To Dad, with love, Brandon tries. It's hard, isn't it? A raspy voice spoke from close proximity. She turned to her right to see a very familiar man looking right back at her. And that's when her breath got right in her throat. She couldn't be mistaken. It was the same stranger with the grey sweater who used to come regularly to the arrivals. His eyes held some intensity that she wasn't able to look away from, a sense of empathy that made her feel like he understood her situation. He strode slowly and slugged next to her, with his shoulders slightly slumped and his eyes shimmering from his tears at bay. Yes, it is, she said carefully, as the man looked so fragile and vulnerable though he tried to maintain a nonchalant front. Death, it's inevitable, he began. None can escape it. I've witnessed it too, she continued. It took away my friend. It took away my family, he spoke, with his voice barely above a whisper and he motioned to the keychain resting on her palm. My name is Jonathan Trice and I'm his father. She let out an inaudible gasp as she stared at the man and that's when she realized they had similar facial features. She gently lifted the keychain and stared at it for a moment. And after their death, my life changed. I know they won't come back. I know they are gone forever. But with a false hope that someday they will, I waited for them. I still do. But the reality is harsh, and fate has somehow led me to ramble to a stranger, and I, I can't believe I'm telling you all this. His voice broke, and a straight tear rolled down his cheek, but he continued. I have tried to end it all at an extent. I, I, I just... She cut him off by placing her hand on his. I know, losing people is hard. But it all depends whether we recover from the trauma or not. Your loved ones wouldn't like this, you know. Remember? Whatever happens, life goes on. Like the tides that don't wait for the sunrise. You never walk alone. She lifted her chin up to meet a sorrowful gaze and spoke. You have me now. She then placed the keychain gently on his palm, and this preserve it, a memory of the euphoric life that you once lived. And let this give you hope that life will be better, that everything happens for a reason, that you can face everything, even if you have to live in solitude. She finished and felt as if a huge weight was lifted off her chest. There was a silence that followed. And this silence was nowhere near awkward. It was comforting and reassuring. They say that silences speak unspoken words. And this silence was nothing less. He now knew that he had to move on. And he was thankful for her for making him realize that. He hugged her as a gesture of gratitude. Almost as if she lifted the veil that surrounded him in darkness and a sudden sense of epiphany overwhelmed him. As they pulled away from the hub, though the atmosphere was quite piercing, 
A sudden warmth spread through their hearts. He knew that sooner or later, he would move on and make himself stronger. She realized that she, instead of brooding over the past, had to come out of it and make herself stronger too. When he can, why can't she? See you soon, he whispered. Yes, soon. Her simple yet meaningful words were his serendipity. Though she missed his warmth as he walked away and a sudden breeze of frost made her shiver, this accidental encounter made her realize life, encouraged her to work on the present and play of the way for a stronger her and a blissful future. His hesitant yet ready acceptance was her serendipity. And remember, everything happens for the better, even death. And whatever happens, make yourself stronger, face yourself, and love yourself. And thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm so thankful. And don't forget to share this. And until then, it's bye from me, Ritanya.